I will gladly defer to Mike Furry. <laughs> Mike there Furry, we go. coach of Limestone University. I'm sorry about the miscue. I, 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 my bad. I sent it to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> You're good. How thanks you, for joining us, good. Coach. How you doing, Coach? Yeah, thanks for having me on. Uh, I'm doing great. Just uh, We're out here in the middle of nowhere recruiting, so we're trying to get uh, get our roster filled up here at Limestone. Is the the Limestone, of- that's in like northern South Carolina, right? It's a uh, it's an hour south of Charlotte, an hour north of Greenville, and then yeah. about three and a half to four from uh, Hilton Head, Myrtle, and Charleston. So yeah. my brother lives in uh, in Greenville, so I know the area a little bit. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, you're getting some people yeah, from there. Um, I'll recruit firm and get some of those paladins over to you. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. That would be great. I appreciate that. So, Mike, let's talk about this. I want to really quick hit on limestone because it's not. I mean, look, everybody in, in the Detroit area, University of Michigan, Michigan State, right? I mean, that's that's the big ones. You know, a lot of people aren't familiar with limestone or the history or the fact that you found just incredible success in your time there. Could, could you just kind of walk folks through a little bit about limestone, the history, the 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 um, the program and, and what you've done with it so far? Yeah, you know, our uh, it's kind of pretty neat. Our, our school, uh, Limestone University, is uh, – it's one of the largest uh, colleges in the country in regards to student body of athletes. I think over 80 some percent of our athletes that live on our, our students that live on campus are athletes. Um, wow. I think we're 15. I think we're number 15 in the country in regards to varsity sports of all divisions. And so um, it's a very unique place in regards to uh, just the, the student body and, and, you know, what captures all that in regards to the athletes. But, um, at the same time, they did not have football 10 years ago. And I don't laugh because you're probably thinking, well, hold on. If it's one of the largest schools in the country that have sports, you would think they would have football, but they did not have football. Um, so the program is really uh, about 10 years old, 10 to 12 years old, and uh, has not had a lot of success. And um, I was down here in, in 16 and 17. We had the opportunity to have a couple of seasons where we got some wins and went to Chicago and now we're back and, and, uh, um, and it's not, uh, I think they've won maybe four games in the past four years. And so, um, but uh, just glad to be down here. Okay. Work it out for you a little bit then. That's why you're recruiting. You. <laughs> <laughs> oh, come in, sell, so sell signal. <laughs> That's oh, one, one reason why you recruit. So <laughs> <laughs> Mike, I want to, I want to talk a little bit about, your time um, in the in the NFL, and and then we'll focus in a little bit on the on the Lions. But I think the first question is, which did you like better? I mean, being such an old school players player, I mean, you were born probably thirty years too late, playing both sides of the ball. But did you prefer offense or defense? <laughs> yeah, you know, it's uh, you know I've been asked that question a lot, and um, I'm really fifty fifty. I think there were really? some things that I really enjoyed on the defensive side. Uh, less thinking, uh, the playbook wasn't as big. You didn't have to adapt to coverages. You didn't have to get off a man, you know, you didn't have to be yep. press and, and, uh, you didn't have to, uh, you know, I tell people all the time, you didn't have to release. You didn't have to run a route. You didn't have to get out of your break. You didn't have to catch a ball coming hundred miles an hour and without getting hit and you had to run after the catch. So I think there was some, you know, there's some great things about playing wide out, but at the same time, less thinking, uh, than on the defensive side of the ball, but. Then on the defensive side of the ball, you do have to hit those running backs that were, you know, 230 pounds. <laughs> and speed, uh, yeah. that, that, there's a, there's some advantages and some disadvantages to play on either side. So watching you as a wide receiver, I mean, it was it in Detroit. It was incredible. I mean, we, you, I remember you lit the city up. It, you just you blew up around here, and it was so fun to watch. Those were fun years of football. Mike Martz as a, as, as, a, uh, as an offensive coordinator – did he make the offense more difficult or or less difficult as an offensive coordinator comparatively? No, I, you know, I think I think the one thing that uh, people think just because of Mike and the whole mad scientist deal that he brought from St. Louis, uh, when you really think about Mike Martz, uh, you know, everybody's still to this day still running Mike's offense somewhere in the National yeah. Football League. You yeah. can see it. Yeah. You can see it everywhere. So it's not the schematics was not the deal. Um, I think the thing that uh, I think Mike towards the end was kind of in that middle of old school and new school. 
And uh, Mike was Mike was legit old school. And Mike demanded excellence out of you. Uh, he demanded that uh, he, he, he stood for accountability and he knew what he wanted and he believed in it. And that's how you were going to do it. And so I think uh, towards the end of Mike's career in the National Football League, I, I think we started seeing more guys uh, that haven't been coached like that and don't resp didn't respond really well to those kind of things in which when you look at a guy like myself, that's uh, completely old school and I was older and that's all we knew. Yeah. And, um, and so when you don't have guys that are, uh, that understand the value of lining up, you know, Mike used to say all the time, be where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there and don't fool the quarterback. And if that means you line up two yards outside the numbers on a, on a 10 yard end cut, then that's where you line up. It's not going to be on the numbers. It's not going to be two yards inside the numbers. You're going to be two yards outside the numbers because this works. And, um, and I think as, as the game has developed in college in regards to guys playing, um, sometimes guys are only playing on one side of the ball. Uh, you know, maybe it's just they're playing on the right side the whole entire game. They have like maybe five routes that they run in the game. They got a smoke. They got a, uh, a now screen. They got a five yard hitch, a five yard slant. They got a nine yard stop and they have a go ball. Like that's it. And, um, and so when you jump into an offense like that and everybody wants instant success, uh, I think that's where it kind of started hurting a little bit into the execution of, of, uh, of the, uh, you know, Mike's offense. Yeah. So you, you did a little pit stop with the bears. Um, we'll let you, we'll let you go on that <laughs> thing, but uh, your thoughts on like, like being in the enemy, we're going to get them the to us. You're a lion. Um, <laughs> even though I know you played in a lot of places, what, what was it like doing that? Was that something that you had to get past or was it pretty easy because that's just where the job was? Yeah, I think in the, uh, you know what, to be honest with you, my wife and I, my boys are, uh, my boys were born in Detroit. Um, you know, my daughter grew up in Detroit and, uh, we love Detroit. And, and I think Detroit, everybody always asks me all the time, what was the favorite place that I, I got a chance to play? And it's always Detroit. And um, because we just, there was just something there. It wasn't the fact that I had, I tell Mike March all the time, everybody says that I probably was the, 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 the most unknown guy that probably hit a thousand yards. I tell him all the time. I said, no, you just finally gave me an opportunity. It was, I was just almost 30 years old, you know? <laughs> and, um, and, and I wish, I, I wish I could have played in Detroit. Uh, like you mentioned a little bit earlier about being, you know, in the past a little bit, I wish I could have played in Detroit in Mike's offense and given an opportunity when I was 22, 23 years old, not when I was 30 years old. Yeah. And, um, but, but again, that's just, that's hindsight, but uh, I have a special place in my heart. Uh, my wife and I both do for Detroit uh, for personal reasons and family reasons, but also uh, we, we've created a lot of great relationships and friends from Detroit. And so um Playing on Thanksgiving Day in Detroit, those would be things that I'll never forget. Even when I coached for Chicago, uh, I always wanted to make sure I was always hoping that we would go back to Detroit and play on Thanksgiving Day. Um, and 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 not because I was a Chicago Bear, but because I yeah. represented the Detroit Lions. And that's how that's what you grew up watching when you were a little kid. And, and so uh, it's it's always a special place for us. You know, you, you talk about that that special place in your heart, but you are, I mean, as a player as a coach and, and as a person, a, a, a man of great heart. And this is one of the, the big threads we keep seeing come through uh, players and coaches in the Detroit Lions. And it's something that we've been talking about a little bit as we as we do this today. Um, I just learned this about you, and it, and, and it stunned me. And I'm, I'm going to let you kind of share the story. But right after your, your son was born, a unexpected opportunity, I guess, uh, arose and 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 – um, there was an abandoned child at the hospital. Can, can you just share that story a little bit with, uh, with, with, uh, with the listeners? Yeah, we, uh, you know, my wife and I, um, we did a lot of charity work up in Detroit at, at some of the boys, uh, homes up there in Detroit and just became affiliated with, uh, you know, wanting to adopt. And, uh, my wife and I had gone through, um, our first two or three years of our marriage where we could not, uh, get pregnant. And um, at that time, we had always had a, had a heart for adopting. And we had a situation that uh, evolved in Detroit um, after my youngest son or after my son was born that we could uh, we were looking to adopt and ended up adopting a young man uh, out of Detroit that uh, 
has been a great addition to our family. That's great. And that was three weeks, three days, some some crazy short time after your son was born? It was uh, eight months. Eight months. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was a lot shorter, but yeah. still. That's still a pretty yeah. condensed timeline right there. That, that, <laughs> that's a lot more so, uh, than you used to have. <laughs> Yeah, you know it's it's amazing how God just kind of puts everything in order, and you you're you know you're not not searching for answers, but you're always kind of figuring out why this and why that, and and uh, but going back to '03 when my wife and I were having troubles getting pregnant, and then becoming a uh, completely affiliated with uh, a boys home up there, uh, just close to the facility, and and doing a lot of things with them, and and then wanting to adopt uh, possibly some kids out of that home while we were in Detroit. Uh, and then to have a young man that we were able to adopt, uh, it's been, a, it's been awesome. That's been great. And, and, and fatherhood, I, I, I mean, I can attest, I just sent my youngest off to, as a freshman to, to college. It's the most rewarding thing that I've ever done in my life. Just in, incredibly rewarding to watch these, these young men and women grow into, into something so special, but, um, to to take one in and um, for you know adopt a child from uh, a place that that isn't your own, and then have them as a part of the family and help raise them and be that kind of a figure, it's it's such a great kind of cause. And 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 Mike, you've always been kind of connected to charitable causes wherever you've been, and you've had a big again back to the the heart thing, a big heart in that way. And uh, just really really appreciate that of you and so many of the people that have come through. Detroit and the Lions organization along the way. Do you, do you, did you, was it obvious or was there any kind of like telling moments with the Lions that you, that you said, wow, this is a, a place that looks for people of character or that, uh, that a character is a part of who we bring, or is it just, is it just kind of lucked that way for the organization throughout the years? You know, I'll tell you, uh, my, my wife, uh, People don't know this, but a lot of people don't know this actually. But my wife actually worked for Ford Motor Company, and um, and was a, a sales rep for Ford Ford Motor Company when we first uh, got married. I've known her since second grade, but she works for Ford, and um, and I was trying to run around in arena football, and and so I've spent some time with her and, and around the Ford company, and I spent some time with her up in Detroit, and 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 I, you know you always looked at the Ford family. And Ford Motor Company as a as a blue collar family, you know, a family that just comes to work every day, uh, an organization that just they don't they don't promote or they don't boast about anything. They just they they literally go to work. And you think about the assembly lines and all the people from Detroit that worked on those assembly lines and build cars and automobiles and really represent Ford. Uh, at that point in time, you know, I think that's something that you really you really it becomes a staple of who you are. Uh, and, and, and to me, I've always kind of been like that my whole life. I've had to work for everything yep. and, um, I wouldn't want it any other way, but, um, you know, I wasn't the most talented kid out of high school. I wasn't the most talented, most athletic kid, uh, you know, in college, but I did know, I did believe in work ethic. And I believe that the work ethic that I put in, uh, not only on the field, but more importantly off the field and just kind of having that passion, um, to succeed by work ethic is something that I felt that was kind of molded the Detroit Lions and myself uh, when I was going through it. And I think that's why they've had a, a great opportunity when they've hired Dan Campbell, because I, Danny's the same way. You know, he, he's a blue collar guy that just goes to work and he's very passionate. Him and I, we know we're very passionate about what we do. Um, we love, uh, I, I, I don't know if you, if you're born this way or if it's just something that, um, that just evolves in your life uh, as you grow older. But, you know, we have a huge passion to make an impact on other people and help people. Um, our careers never were the most important thing. It was more uh, the people that we were around and, and you know, uh, making an influence in those people, a positive influence in those people and, and trying to help them, which is, is why we're in coaching now. But, you know, I just think all those things is a culmination of who the Ford family, you know, who they are, who they represent, and, you know, having the opportunity to you know, be around Mrs. Ford and and the Junior and all those guys up there that that uh, kind of solidified that that's who they are, and uh, that's why I think it was so. I was so proud to play for you know I was so proud to be a Detroit Lions uh, member because of the blue collar background. Yeah, that I felt that the fourth. That's kind of how I built my career, and it was a great opportunity to have it you know have that chance to play for them. 
I was, did you go ahead? Did Rich. your career overlap with Dan at all in yeah. Detroit? I I I think you probably missed each other by a year or two, didn't it? No. Yeah, they, he was the. Uh, yeah, we did. Yeah, they yeah. were right but, on uh, top of Danny each other. Were, yeah. Danny I, go ahead. Sorry, yeah, Mike. We were we were right there together, and uh, yeah, no, we were we were together, and um, you know, I got I got two pictures that people send me all the time. One is with me jumping in the end zone with uh, Megatron, and uh, the other one is me getting true. lifted up in the end zone by Dan Campbell. So. <laughs> uh, Kind of, kind of, pretty neat thing. <laughs> so let me let me ask you about Dan. Was he always this stoked up on caffeine? <laughs> because he's always been, and, and and I say that you know partially facetiously, but I mean he's a guy that's always seemed to have an intensity about him. You know what I mean? And 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 Thank was you. it the same way as a player? Was he that same way? You know, again, you know, I I think when you go back, go back and look at his. Just go look, go back and look at Dan Campbell and just kind of think about, you know, was he the most athletic guy? Probably not. He probably, I know he wasn't the fastest guy. Um, but I do know that when he played for the Dallas Cowboys, uh, people didn't like to play against him because he worked his tail off. He outworked you. He had a motor that didn't stop. And uh, he was very, very passionate about the way he played the game. And so to me, I think that transitions very well into coaching um, because I know the one thing for sure, when I got in, when I met Danny and got a chance to play with Danny at, at, at the Detroit Lions, it was almost like he just kind of takes you under his wing because he wants to help you. And uh, but yet you can also see how he plays the game and how much he celebrates. I think that's why, the reason why I bring that picture up is because, you know, I just scored a touchdown and he was that excited that I scored a touchdown. You don't really see that too often in the National yeah. Football League because everybody's fighting for touchdowns. But um, that's who he is. And, um, and I think that's how that, that's, that has allowed him to transition into coaching and become very successful, very fast. And, um, you know, it's hard to win in the league yeah. week in and week out. It doesn't matter what your record is. Yeah. It is hard to win in the national football league and what he's done and, and what he's doing is, uh, you know, you got to give him a lot of credit, but it's not surprising. So when we, when we get to talk to him, what's the insider piece that we can hit him with? That's going to make him laugh that no one else would know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, you I want to share the secrets. Uh, yeah, we 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 uh, we did a bowling, we did a, a a foundation bowling event one time, and I'm not sure a lot of people saw him dress up as Kid Rock, and uh, he nailed it. And uh, I, I literally thought Kid Rock might have walked into our bowling our bowling event. So um, it was uh, it, it was pretty neat. That's awesome. That's awesome. So Mike Limestone. You're rocking it out there. You're doing a lot of charity work. We appreciate you coming on and and and, and kind of sharing some of the stories uh, that you've had here. Um, what what's what's next for you with Limestone? I mean, is this is this the the championship, and then you, you you're going to build on, or or do you hope to kind of continue to grow your career uh, from this point? Is is Dan going to bring in Mike Furry as a, as a coach along the way? <laughs> well, you can ask him that, but, uh, you know, right now I, I I've learned, uh, you know, I, I've learned even, even as I guess I learned it as a player, uh, somebody taught me this a long time ago, but wherever you are, you better work your tail off and you better worry about where, where, where you're at that day. And, uh, yes, right now we, we love being down here and we love these kids that we're around and the good Lord has us here for a reason. And so, for us to be looking for anything uh, outside of today is it would be selfish. Um, you know, do I have aspirations to become a, a head coach at the highest level? Absolutely. I would be lying if I, if I told you that that wasn't a, a goal of mine or to be able to impact people at the highest level. But right now uh, this is where the good Lord has us. And, and um, like my wife tells us all the time, you know, we, I wanted to be a pastor growing up and uh the greatest pulpit that I think you can have in sports is being a head coach and you get a chance to impact everybody that's on your yeah. team. And, and um, we're going to do that right now until the good Lord has something else for us or tells us to go somewhere else. Yeah, no, that's, that's great. I, I tell you just to your a testament to your character, every single person I talk to, 
Uh, it's oh my god, Mike. We and and Riz when we used to do the 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 pre the game preview with Tony Ortiz. Tony Ortiz could not stop singing the praises of Mike Fury. He absolutely and he. I was just talking to him uh, two days ago. He said, "Tell Mike." I said, "Hey man, and I love you." The whole thing. He he really appreciates you. Everybody does, man. Mike, everyone you've touched is has been touched in a in a, in a very positive way just by your presence and. Uh, Really appreciate you coming on with us and 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 kind of just being that that right kind of person for the world. What we're so we, it's I think kind of the theme of today's show is that character and what makes people uh, help elevate a world because we all can look at the world and see it, it feels a little worse now than it did five years ago and and we want to try to reverse that and it's through generosity and doing things to help the others around us that we can do that. So thank you for uh, for living that way and being that kind of person. Well, I appreciate it. I, uh, as, as I mentioned earlier, and I didn't want to get too sentimental, but I think Detroit was the first place where, uh, and I hate to use the word accepting, but um, Detroit was the first place that really took our family in and uh, created an environment for our family where, where we had people that were genuine and uh, people that we loved and people that supported us uh, like we've never been supported before. And uh, as you mentioned with the Tony Ortiz's and and all the guys that, uh, you know, the, the Tim O'Neill's and they quit all the, just everybody, yeah. you know, yeah. Um, yeah. those relationships have continued since the day I left. And, you know, if I had one thing that I wish I could do in my whole life, I wish I could have played for the Detroit Lions uh, for my whole entire career and retired as a Lion. But, um, but uh, it's a special place for us. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, Mike, well, thank you. Thanks for I, sharing that. We've only got, I know we've only got so much of your time. I appreciate you joining us and appreciate you doing that. I hope to talk to you soon. I, you know, and I hope you do great work and bring the championship to Limestone like right now. And and we get to see you back in Detroit because Detroit is a place of very, very special people. I've lived around the country. I know, I know you have as well. And there's a certain character. Every, every place has its own character. Detroit has exactly that one of, of of a camaraderie and a brotherhood of people that that you know like you talked about with Ford. There's just a certain personality that that Detroit oh. has, and it's the best personality of everywhere I've lived. And and I miss I miss it every day. I want I, I will get back. I know I will. Yep. All right, yep. Mike. So guys, I really appreciate it. Yeah. This means the world to us and my family, my wife and I, and just to be able to yeah. tell our story and talk a little bit about it. Our our goal is. Our goal is that our story, our impact can affect one person, which uh, which is what our job is to do and, and to be able to influence them and, and better their life. And, and uh, as we've always said, since my wife created the slogan when we were in Detroit, it's better to give than to receive. And, and that's what life is about. Yep. All Amen right. to that. Good luck on the recruiting trail. I hope you get, I hope you can land some, some players that uh, wouldn't normally consider limestone because uh, you, you're going to have a good thing going, man. I can feel it. Yeah. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thank you so much. So much. All right. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Mike Furry, former Thanks, wide receiver Mike. for the Detroit Lions and some other teams, and current coach of Limestone University. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate yeah. it. You're, you're Limestone, right. Uh, 